I'll tell you, I've, I've snuck into the back room when those chimes are out during the week when no one's here. It's a lot harder than it looks. You guys did an amazing job. Thank you. You got that out for me. John's gospel, uh, it states that Peter and John saw some of the linen that was wrapped around Jesus' head folded and placed on the, the place where he was, where, he, where his body had lain and now he was gone and just that linen was laying there folded. And that would indicate two things to Peter and John. First, in the Old Testament, when Aaron, as the priest, would sacrifice the goats on the Day of Atonement, when he was finished, he would take his headpiece, and he would fold it specifically, and he would place it down, and that would indicate that the job was done. That the, that the people's sins had been atoned for. Now, while that is interesting in itself, also in Jewish culture, when a, uh, a master was at the banquet, when he was having a feast, he would, uh, the servant would come out and, and the servant would set everything nice and perfect and make this beautiful arrangement of food and, and everything uh, laid out on the table as was their custom. And the master would, if he want, needed to get up and run an errand or, or do something or get up and talk to a guest, he would fold his napkin and put it in front of his place setting so that the servant would know that the master was going to be right back, that he was coming back. This would indicate to the disciples that while Jesus had risen from the dead, he was not there. He was coming back. And that is a promise to all of us that continues today. We celebrate his resurrection. We know he's gone to heaven to be with his father and to his God, like he said in John, but also he's coming back for his church. He's coming back for his bride, just like he promised that he would. You can be seated. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received from the Lord, this is Paul talking, what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you, do in remembrance of of me. And in the same way, he took the cup. Which is for, he said, this is my, in the same way, he took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you drink this bread, or eat this bread, and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We have been given this beautiful way to commune with our God, to be in relationship with our God, to be in unity with our God. And we're going to proclaim this until the day that he comes back. And that is a great promise. The promises of God are never ending. I love that. He rose just like he said he was going to do. And guess what? He's going to come back again someday for his church, just like he says he's going to do. The table has been set. And if you're a, a guest with us today, please feel free to come and celebrate communion if you're comfortable. The wine is red and the juice is white. And we're just glad you're here. So feel free to participate in as much or as little as you would like. Body of Christ given for you. 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 
the blood of Christ was shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
things to uh, pray for today uh, as we get ready to close here on this beautiful Easter Sunday morning. My goodness, beautiful. We need to uh, continue to lift up the nation of Israel. Um, they've been there's there's a lot going on there, and we just need to pray for them. They've been, you know. God's chosen people long before today's conflict, and there'll be God's chosen people after. We need to pray for a revival in that nation. We need to pray that the leaders will come to the Lord, and uh, just pray that God would have his way in that nation. That's the best way to support them, is to pray for them. Uh, sadly, there was a, um, there was a, on 224th and Meridian yesterday, there was a, uh, there was a, a employee at Walgreens, if you know, on 224th and Meridian that was stabbed by someone who came in around 2 o'clock in the afternoon, stabbed him, and then ran out. He was arrested. Um, they closed down Walgreens. It was just a... It was a very sad event. And the as far as, far as I know, the uh, employee has uh, is doing well, is, is surviving, but... That's our community that we're called to reach, and it, it just breaks my heart when things like this happen, uh, because it's fear will settle on the community, and people will be afraid to to go out in public. And you know, as the, as the church, we need to push back the forces of darkness because there is a spiritual battle over our communities, and we need to uh, we need to be praying for them and and the employees, and and just be praying for them as well. And I I, I debated on whether I should bring it up or not. So I, I just will, but, um, you know, we need to be praying for uh, Americans who are, are suffering from gender dysphoria. And my heart really, really is, is broken for them. And, um, you know, there was statements made by our president, and I'm not going to bring those up. Um, but it really was to me a call to pray for those who have, have uh, you know, fallen victim to that deception. Um, God created man and God created woman and, and anything else will lead people's hearts away from God. And as the church, it's our job to speak the truth and to love them and to care for them and to bring them back to Jesus. And that's what we need to do. So we're going to pray for them as well. And then we had a couple people in the hospital this week. Uh, thank you everyone who's who's prayed for all those people, uh, we sure appreciate them. It's great to be a part of a church that prays. And I know we get a, a prayer chain out to our emails very, very quickly. And it's, um, it's a beautiful thing that we can communicate uh, very quickly and pray for each other's needs. So, will you join me in prayer? Father God, we just are, are so grateful that you rose from the dead. You did what you said you were going to do. And now we have a place where we can meet with you, and that's through your son, Jesus. And we come to you right now in his name, and we lift up our community, this community of Graham that's hurting with the, the violent act against uh, a citizen here and a community member, Lord. I pray for their complete recovery. I pray that they will be uh, restored and they will uh, be healed, Lord, that you would bring Christians uh, in their life around them to lift them up and bring them to a place of not just physical healing, but Lord, emotional healing from any kind of trauma or any kind of fear that would try to settle in their hearts. God, we lift up the nation of Israel to you right now. Lord, we know they're not perfect. We don't pretend they are, but you have a specific plan for that people. And we lift them up to you and we ask you, God, that you would uh, do a work in such a way that leads the Jewish people to the true Messiah, and that is Jesus Christ that we set, that we celebrate today. And Lord, uh, we just lift up those who are uh, have fallen into deception, God, who have fallen into a place where they have found identity outside of you. And Lord, I pray that you would use us as the church to display the true loving power of Jesus Christ to a world that's broken without you. And Lord, help us, give us the wisdom, give us the love, give us the discernment to do that effectively, to bring people to you and to healing and find their identity in you. Lord, we love you so much. Thank you for this amazing church. And thank you that we. I see so many families sitting together. God, I just 
I'm so grateful, Lord, for what you've done in bringing us together here to celebrate your son today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. you and may he keep you may he cause his face to shine upon you may he be gracious unto you and give you peace in the name of the father the son and of the holy spirit
before we're officially dismissed, I just it's been a uh, beautiful Lent season and a beautiful Holy Week. It's been very, very busy around here. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, special thanks to Dan and Mary Kay for all their efforts uh, to, to lead us throughout all these services once a week. We had three services this week. Uh, everyone who was involved in, in uh, making this altar area beautiful. I know Carol and Lorraine did a really good job. And just everyone who has served and participated in Lent and Holy Week, who made soups, who got here early to set up, who set up communion. If I start naming names, I'm going to forget someone and get in trouble. But you know who you are. And God sees all your efforts. And it was for the... Uh, the beauty of the church, and so that we could grow as a community, grow together, but mostly grow in our relationship to him. And I finally want to thank, at last, my wife, Naomi. She's worked really hard with the kids. I've been gone during Holy Week a lot, and she's been picking up the slack at home, so I appreciate her so very much. And the look on her face was priceless right there. I wish I would have taken a picture. Uh, <laughs> and then I put that on our, our Easter card. But seriously, everyone who worked hard to make this Lent and Easter season happen, uh, we appreciate you so much. And, you know, the, the world needs the good news that Jesus is alive. We need a, a life Fill Jesus in our culture, in our world, in our relationships, in our businesses, in our schools, in our streets, in our homes, in our families. And that's our responsibility now, is to take that life, like this song says, we know he's alive because he lives in our hearts. Let's act like he's alive in our hearts when we go out into this world. God bless you all. Thank you for coming. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. What's in those? What's in those? Candy? Candy? You guys want more candy?